thanks for stopping by Peace Garage. Well, it's time to gap our piston rings, install our piston rings to the pistons, and put the pistons in the assembly, put them in the block, and get our rotating assembly finished. Let's get started. Now, what we're going to be installing in this engine, since we're not looking for some huge horsepower numbers, we're going to be installing a cast aluminum hyperutectic aluminum piston, flat top piston with the four valve release. Now, the cast aluminum or the hyperutectic aluminum all that means is that the aluminum has a little more silicon in it which gives it a lower coefficient of thermal expansion so we can use tighter tolerances here and some of the benefits are there of, of using that type of material it's lighter in weight and it's lower in cost so these aren't too expensive and also have the coated skirt on here the coated skirt makes it nice and, and uh, easy to install and, and it makes it uh, believe it or not it reduces noise and piston slap it's a pretty short piston so it's not a, not a really tall piston Connecting that to an Eagle rod. These are Eagle Eagle SIR 5140 steel rods, a forged forged I beam rod. It's steel, uh, the 5140, and it comes with the ARP uh, 8740 cap screws, and they're really nice. They're shot peened and they're really balanced fairly well. They're plus or minus two grams, so they're really pretty accurate. Uh, and I have the also have the machine shop install the pistons on the connecting rods and have them put them to the pistons to the uh, wrist pin there because when they balance the rotating assembly they have to have all the stuff done and they balance it all for me. So let's uh, put the rings in. What we're going to be using for this engine also is a is a Hastings uh, chrome uh, steel molly ring. Uh, nothing fantastic but it's a really good ring. So let's, let's gap these rings and we'll put them on the pistons and get them installed. Alright now, piston rings. You guys always hear me talk about planning your engine and doing all your homework up front. And if you do that, this is what makes it easy. If you are able to bore a cylinder standard oversized like 30 thousandths, it makes it very easy to buy a set of rings that are pre-gapped and you won't have to do much grinding or actually no grinding whatsoever. I'm using these Hastings rings as a steel molly ring. This is the top ring or the first ring. This is the second ring that goes underneath. Now we're going to gap these really quick and a couple things to notice orientation is important which way goes up is important now this the top ring is completely uh, square or rectangle there are no identifying marks on it anywhere there's no dot so it doesn't matter which way is up on this one it's pretty symmetrical all the way around actually it is symmetrical all the way around the second ring that goes in you can see has a chamfer on the inside here which may be tough to see you may be able to see it or not see it but there's a chamfer here but it also has a dot. You can see the dot right here and this dot indicates that this part of the piston ring goes up. The dot always goes up on a piston ring. So let's check these uh, gaps real quick and all you have to do is insert it in the bore and I'll put it, let's see, I'll put it this way so you're able to see how to do it. And the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piston here and I'm just going to level it out or level out that ring in there so that it's nice and flat and I'm sure that my my two gaps there are touching or the close alignment there now the distance or how much gap should you have in your ring the rule is three and a half thousandths for every inch of cylinder bore these bores are just over four inches because it was bored out thirty thousandths so I want to have at least fourteen thousandths probably no more than twenty thousandths on my gap so I'm checking my gap right here and I'll start at 14 thousandths, which is good. It just about fits in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right up immediately to 20, because I want to have 40, and I want to have less than 20. So I'll try and put the 20 in there, and the 20 does not go in. It doesn't go in easy. But let's just, for the hell of it, see what it goes down to. Let's see if the 19 fits in there. The 19 is a little bit tight. Let's try the 18. And the 18. The eight the 18 does go in. So about 18 thousandths. Not bad for the first ring. So let's take the first ring out. And let's do the same thing with the second ring. Again, the dot goes up. We'll take this and we'll set this in here. Oops, let me put it this way so you can see. We'll turn this. I'll get the piston. I use the piston to get it nice and flush so that the gaps are even or the ends of the piston are the same 
distance, which makes it easier to check. So again, I'll start. Let me get my uh, gauge here, my feeler gauges. You want to have at least 14, and the 14 goes in, and I'll jump immediately up to 20, to make sure we're not over 20, and the 20 doesn't go in at all. So let me drop down, let's see now, let's try 17, and the 17 goes in, jump up to 19, 19 just about goes in, one last check with that 20 and the 20 doesn't go in. So it looks like the gap is 19. So we're within limits for the gap, end gap on the piston rings. So again, when you plan it out, you're able to buy your piston ring and it eliminates you from having to grind your ring. Now you can custom fit or you can have the zero fit ring which overlaps instead of having a gap, it overlaps. There's all kinds of things you can do, but for this engine, 350, we're not looking at a huge horsepower, standard ring, standard bore, standard size piston. The more standard you can go with parts, the cheaper it's going to be and the easier it's going to be to fit these components without having to do custom work. Now we can put these rings on the pistons. Okay guys, now Putting pistons in and doing this part of the job, I like to do it all at one time, meaning I don't want to put the rings on the pistons and set them down and then pick them up and put them in and set them down and do something else to set them down. I want to try and do it all at one time so I re reduce the risk of dropping it or damaging the piston. That's the most important thing. Now, a couple things to note here. When you put the piston in the bore, the part here with the chamfer on the rod, that's got to face the counterweight, so this faces the front of the engine. Okay, See there's an F on there, for the, on the piston it says F, there's also a dot, so that dot faces the front. So I'm going to start by putting my rings on. First I'm going to put on my oil wiper and wrap that around and if you remember some of my other videos you want to make sure that you lift up this edge, you don't want to drag it across the front, so I just lift it up just a little bit and just put it there. Now, if you're going to, you want to clock the rings, and clocking them means you want to have them in different orientation. You don't want to have all the gaps in one spot. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn this one third. And I'm going to take my bottom oil rail, I'm going to put that, that opening right here. Again, I'm just going to bring that around and I'm going to lift up over my wiper. Okay. Now there's my gap for that. I'm going to take that, I'm going to turn that one-third. I'll take the top wiper, the top oil rail, I'm sorry, put that in around. And I won't drag it on the piston, I don't want to scratch the piston, so I'll lift it up a little bit. I'll put that right in place. So now I have that right there. Now, here's the front of the piston, so, or I'm sorry, the front of the engine. And I have my my a gap right here for my third. So I'm going to start my first ring. I'm going to take this and turn this back, just the third, and I'm going to put my second ring on, the bottom ring. And if you recall, that's the, that's the first ring. The bottom ring is the one that has the dot on it, the dot here. This dot has to face up just like this. So since I'm left-handed, I'm going to be doing it this way. I'm going to use my piston ring pliers, and you want to use pliers because you don't want to force it on there, you can crack the ring, and if you crack the ring you have to buy a whole new set. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to have it in my slot, and I'm going to orient that gap so that I'm going to find, here's my top third, okay, right there. There's that one, and now since I have this gap over here, I'm going to have the other gap over here, which will line up nicely when I put this ring on the top ring like that. Okay? So, now my rings are all clocked as soon as I put them on there and I'm going to make it easy on myself. I'm going to put this right in the cylinder. I have the cylinder already prepped with some oil around the cylinder. I'll put my piston ring compressor on the piston. I've been using this one for quite some time. I think it's almost time for a new uh, ring compressor. Okay. I have a little bit of lube in there to make it easy to come out. 
Again, chamfer the dot facing forward. I'll set that in the board just like that. And tap this to get this. Make sure that the uh, ring compressor is nice and flat around the block. And with one motion, I push it all in just like that. Now, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to immediately put that cap on, lube that bearing, and uh, tighten it to the crank. Alright, now on the bottom of the engine, got my crankshaft out of the way here because I have my connecting rod right here as you can see. And what you don't want to do is push this piston so far down that the connecting rod comes and hits your crankshaft because you will put a nick in there for sure. So while this, I have a ton of room in here, I can put my whole hand in there, there's a lot of room. I'm going to put my bearing in place. My lock notch is up at the top here. So I'll line up my lock notch, put my bearing in like that and I'm going to put some I'll hold that there and just put a little bit of lube on my on the bearing set this up here out of the way so it doesn't fall off like last time just put a little bit of lube on there like that and I'm going to push the piston down so that it lines up with my uh, pin on the crankshaft. And I'm going to do this real slow to make sure I don't nick it. Just guiding it very slow. Okay, there we go. It's all the way down. Okay, now I can take this and turn my crankshaft around. It's like that. So I can see. My connecting rod. Yeah, I have. Oh, of course. That was drop fasteners. Okay, I have my bearing cap. I'm gonna put some lube on the bearing. There's a little bit of lube on that. And since we're using these ARP fasteners, I'm gonna use the ARP, the Ultra Torque. The ultra torque lube goes on the on the fasteners, on the threads, and you can put it underneath the the head of the bolt if you like. You don't have to, but you can. And when you line this up, the lock notch is on the top. Lock notch, the lock notches match up. Put that on there. Line these up. And these are the, what is the 8740 ARP fasteners. So these go, these go to 40 foot pounds. So I'm going to torque it right away. I'm trying to show you the whole process here so you know how long it really takes instead of that, you know, chip foos built the whole car in one hour kind of thing. And 40 foot pounds. Let's get them nice and snug first. Get them both nice and snug. Yeah, you can hear those footsteps walking away. <laughs> okay, we're almost there. Here we go. Okay, 40 foot pounds. One. Forty foot pounds. What you don't have to do is, I've seen guys do this with a torque wrench. They put it on there like this. They go, that doesn't do anything. All you need is one click. When you go there and you reach one click, it's torque. You can stop. Clicking it five times, all you're doing is wearing out your torque wrench. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll just take the crank and I'll just drop the wrench again, and I will rotate just to make sure this piston is not binding up and it moves nice and smooth no binding up whatsoever now all I have to do is repeat that seven more times and we'll be good that makes eight okay quick check 
one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. They're all numbered. The dots are all facing forward on all of the pistons. They're all in the correct orientation. We give it a quick turnover and it turns over nice and smooth. Nothing's binding, clicking, no noises. Now, we'll take a quick look underneath. Let me turn this over. We'll take a quick look and I'll show you what to look for for common problems if you do this and you have problems where it's, it's sticking or it's binding up. Okay, looking at the bottom here, as you turn it over, if you have any binding whatsoever, the first thing you're going to want to look for is to make sure you have your connecting knot rods on right. If you don't have any play in here whatsoever, you might have the rod backwards. If the rod is backward and the chamfer is facing the other way, the rod is going to dig into the fillet on the crankshaft and it will cause these to bind up. That's the first thing you want to look for. Then, after you're done installing them, if you still have binding, look to make sure you don't have anything that's sticking up that might be hitting the block. Sometimes if you leave a, forget to put a, 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 the bolt in all the way, it'll come up and sometimes it, it's, if you have a close clearance on your block, the, the nut can come up and hit the block and you're locking up. So just give it a quick look over. But this one is uh, turning over nice and it works awesome. Okay, the rolling assembly is finished. Now it's pretty simple. If you work neat and you work in order, you should have no problem whatsoever. And it doesn't hurt to go back to check the torque on all your rod bolts to make sure they're all tight just in case you miss one. It happens on occasion. Now next we'll be moving to the top end with the cylinder heads and the rocker arms and the whole lifter assembly. We'll be doing that with the cam putting the top end on. Now if you're following along with this series and you want to get notifications and uh, when I upload a video, click on the little bell here next to subscribe. There's a little bell there and you'll get a notification every time I upload a video. Thanks for stopping by Pizza Garage. <laughs>